I'm Tejas Kumar, and I'm a developer relations consultant. Um, what that means is I work with a number of different dev tools companies and have worked with a number of different de developer oriented companies and help them have a great image with developers and really help um, create solid developer relationships that prove value over time. Um, today, I want to talk about React and frameworks, um, specifically um, why everybody needs to use a framework. And this is really inspired by a tweet from Andrew Clark uh, on the React team, who, you know, in January of this year tweeted uh, and said something really interesting to me. He said, if you use React, you should be using a React framework. If your existing app doesn't use a framework, you should incrementally migrate to one. And if you're creating a new React project, you should use a framework from the beginning. Um, this is interesting because it's it's a clear directive. You should use a framework. Um, the I have some type of compulsion, though, to um, not receive things like this and just kind of do what they say. But I, I feel a need to understand why. Uh, specifically, you know, I, I've, I've done videos in the past where um, before using React, I'll try to understand its value proposition by kind of piecing together what it does. And it's usually not something as good as React, but it helps me go along um, the way. Um, I, I've, I have got videos here on YouTube kind of trying to understand React Fiber or even creating React from scratch. I'll put some links um, up there. But this notion of just use a framework um, has me asking the question, why? Um, and that's the point of today's video. Um, before we get into why, I want to talk about what is a framework, because the space is loaded with multiple different terms. Um, and I see often debates. This is almost a barbed wire topic, right? I see debates of people saying React is a framework. No, React's not a framework. React's a library and so on. So for the intents and purposes of this video, um, I think it makes sense to define what we mean by framework and disambiguate from other similar terms like meta frameworks and libraries. So with, with that, let's get into it. Uh, a library, let's start there. A library for the intents and purposes of this content is a collection of code, um, a, collection, a, a collection of writings, as it were, similar to a traditional library um, that exports functions that you use and that it doesn't care about how you use them. Uh, I think a good example of libraries are things like Lodash, uh, which will just export you a bunch of functions and you use them how you want, or like date functions or similar. I think to some degree, even D3 uh, could be a data visualization library. It's a library in that it exports a bunch of functions and has no opinions about how you use them, when you use them, or why you use them. To build on top of that, a framework then is something with a bit more of a pun intended framework around it. It gives you a frame. It has opinions. Here's how you structure your code. Here's the directories um, that, that you should use. Uh, here's maybe even a linter setup. This has got a lot more opinions and hard rooted conventions. I mean, these conventions are great because they save your team time that they would otherwise spend discussing and you know bike shedding or yak shaving and just allow you to do the work so frameworks are great for velocity and that i feel like is the distinction a framework has opinions and libraries just export stuff um, examples of frameworks in the react space i mean next.js remix um, angular itself is a framework svelte has SvelteKit, quick has quick city solid has solid start in each case the former is the library the latter is the framework and now we might think Okay, but where does meta framework fit in? Um, and really, I feel like this term has no, no basis if we have the working definitions of library and framework. I think a meta framework, if, if we interpret it correctly as meta meaning about, so a framework about frameworks, then it only makes sense in the context that we consider things like React or um, Solid or Quick as frameworks themselves. And then a meta framework is a framework about the framework. But the framework in this case is a library, if that makes sense. So um, I don't really understand the term meta framework. And I think for in the intents and purposes of this video, at least, and maybe there's scope to extend it beyond, but uh, we, we work with library and framework where meta framework doesn't make sense unless we consider libraries frameworks. Okay, hope that clears it up and, and helps us moving forward. Now that we understand what frameworks are, let's ask the question, what frameworks do? Um, frameworks do a number of different things that help developers move fast. And they are an absolute gift um, to any development team, including teams that I've worked with and have worked with in the past. Um, painting with really broad strokes um, across the board, what we see in common is that frameworks usually take on some responsibilities that overlap. And these responsibilities are um, server render, so adding server rendered markup that you then either stream or send to the client. 
is something that is frameworks tend to do. That's also beneficial because um, it helps with things like SEO and also just time to first meaningful bite and paint, etc. Um, second, frameworks help implement routing properly. And what I mean by properly is it's full stack routing. So they have a server router um, that will respond with the appropriate HTTP headers and status codes, etc. And they also have client routers that kind of make the page transitions seem seamless like single page applications and not do a hard reload every time so servers handle routing for us and this is i would say pretty significant um, because if we don't use frameworks and resort to only client side routing what can happen is from the server side we send a 404 but the 404 page is a page that loads up javascript and does client side routing so uh, from server to client we're kind of speaking in mixed signals we're saying hey it's a 404 but actually it works right server rendering fixes that um, Server side frameworks or just frameworks also take into consideration data fetching and they fetch data for us from usually the server side since they already server rendering and routing. Um, and, and because it's done on the server side, they usually make data fetching more secure and also more performant because if your server that does server rendering is deployed close to the sources of your data, then there's not a lot of geographical latency that needs to be overcome and things that are close to, together tend to speak to each other faster right so it's not that your client hops from client to some data center to another data center etc it's your client hops to your ui server that probably sits next to your database and everything just kind of comes faster because they do data fetching on the server side they can also implement things like cross-site request forgery protection or csrf protection among a wealth of other security measures those are the top three i would say server rendering routing data fetching but they handle a million and more probably edge cases things like caching um, there's also now turnkey solutions in addition to frameworks like for authentication and so on so things that we would probably forget or not do properly frameworks take care of and they do it well because they're often maintained by hundreds of people in a large community and there's often issues and they're so widely used that rolling your own framework just seems like rolling your own you know cryptography um why would you do it right um, so in, in fact andrew clark says on twitter like if you don't use a framework you're probably going to accidentally roll your own and then you're going to be in tech debt and it's going to be a problem so these are the things that frameworks do for the purposes of this presentation server rendering routing data fetching what i want to do is spend some time exploring that through code creating kind of a framework just to understand this and then we can go from there okay with that let's jump to the code editor and just add some frameworky stuff so what we've got is um, a project that shows us a list of dog breeds as you can see here um, and when you click on a dog breed like a chihuahua it takes you to a page that shows you a picture of a chihuahua um, this has all the tenets of routing data fetch maybe i should bring this down a little bit hang on there um, this has all the tenets of routing data fetching etc so let's look at the code um, we have an index which is a client side root uh, it's just calls create root from react on client and um, you know renders it into a div element essentially that's what's happening what is app app is a thing that contains a router and it has routes for slash for breed um, under breeds and breathe both these components we look at breeds because that's what you see here on the left um, we have use state and then we fetch data and set it into set state. So this is typical client side application and we just map and render. We render a link that's tied to the router, okay? Um, similar with breed, we just, we have some state, inside use effect we fetch and we set the state and so on. Um, the router is rolled by ourself. Um, we just use context, so we have a router context and we have functions like push state, replace state, listen to the event navigate, the window navigation as well, and finally wrap everything in a context. And route is probably the most naive, which is um, if the path matches the the route context path, show the children, otherwise show nothing, right? Basic, basic switch case router. Okay, what we're going to do is add a server to this. And frankly, we're just going to start with server.ts, uh, maybe tsx, Let's fix that. And all right, it's a server, so we're going to need express, probably, since it's a server. We're going to need um, react. We're going to need a utility from react dom server we'll use render to string for now render to string okay perfect and what we want to do is um, sure we can import app as well um, it's a named export and we'll do const app is express and we'll do app.get on the root and what we're going to do is just sure we can do this so what we're doing is we're sending an html shell and div id is actually supposed to be root 
and we render our app to string kind of like this in fact we can just interpolate this directly here we don't need that good this looks reasonable um, and now we'll just listen on port 3000 and we'll say the app is listening on 3000 perfect this looks good so far let's uh, build it and see what happens so we will hello what's what's happening here um, let's do npx repeat and then we'll open another tab um, Z, sorry, Z framework, and we'll npm run build, and we'll also start the server. So it's building, and we're listening on port 3000. So 5173 is the client bundle, and 3000 is the server bundle. And immediately we see an error. Window is not defined. And this is because our server, our server is trying to serve around our client app. Client apps depend on global browser runtime scope like window so let's let's fix that to fix that we're going to go to our router it's the thing that reads window and tell it you can't just window like that friend so we'll create a function called can window and it will only return that you can window if type of window is not undefined and window is used here as the default route path so we'll say if you can window sure otherwise we need a fallback let's get it from props so we'll add a prop initial path string and we'll get that in here and we'll say either the window or your initial path now we've introduced some props to this so what we can do is if we go to our app component we take another prop here initial path and we'll just pass that to the router so initial path is initial path we're prop drilling a bit but i hope you can forgive that good lastly we have our entry point our client root that needs an initial path and since this is client only we can confidently say this is window.location.path name Okay. But what are we doing on the server side? Well, on the server side, we need an initial path, and this is whatever this is. So we'll match on all paths, and we'll just say the initial path is rec dot, um, dot path. And this should give us what we want. Okay, So let's restart the dev server, um, rebuild it as well, and come back. Okay, cool, we have it. We have it, but it's not fetching data. In fact, we may even have um, the single breed for Baz and G or something. Okay, we have it, but it doesn't render data. And that's because this page, uh, oops, wrong extension. This page doesn't use React. Um, how can we fix it? Well, we add React. So in outside of div ID root, we add a script tag, source is slash client.js. Um, and we tell Express to go read the static file. So app.use static dist and it will go read the client bundle from there so let's restart the dev server and now we're using react on the client and everything kind of follows except um this is still not properly server rendered because we don't have the fetched data like if i view source i don't actually have the breeds of the dogs which is kind of counterintuitive so how can we now fetch data so we've kind of got routing but to be fair it's not serverful routing and also it's not data fetching um okay it kind of is serverful routing but the data fetching piece is missing how do we handle data fetching let's pause and do a little bit of an exercise if i ask you where's the best place to fetch data in a react tree um and and you know we can even visualize it. like is it is it here in app do i fetch data where i'm currently doing it inside the component like when's the right time to fetch data the answer is the best time to fetch data is usually before you start rendering, like as early as possible, as soon as the server endpoint is hit. That's right, before you even render a React application is the time to fetch data. Um, so this is why server rendering and server-based data fetching is ideal, because you fetch and then you render. Um, and it's it just works better that way. And you can also render as you fetch using suspense. We won't get into that for now, but that's an option. So how do we do data fetching on the server side? Let's explore. So let's... Um, go to the server and think about okay how are we going to do data fetching here what we need is some way to go here and take this call from use effect but execute it on the server so this needs to export something um what though and if it if it exports something we'll probably need to import from this module and it's not long until we come to a place where we need uh, file system based routing so we have routing but it's not file system based and if it is file system based we can get the react component from the file system and any functions it exports like to fetch data for example okay let's do file system based routing so um, what we're going to do is move everything uh, to a new directory so we'll do a folder called pages and we'll take breed and breeds 
we'll move them into pages. This is going to cause some problems, I think, for sure. So I'm going to close everything. Um, and we'll rename them to lowercase just for posterity, breed and breed and breeds. Okay. Um, looks good so far. App has changed its um, imports. This is good. TypeScript to the rescue. Save. Um, and I think breeds has a broken link here. We just need to do this. Okay. Everything so far follows. Um, now we need to, uh, to read these from the server side. So what we'll do is we'll say const pages is, and we'll do this synchronously, but we really shouldn't. We should do this asynchronously. I'm just a little bit lazy. So we'll read a directory, but we'll read not just any directory, but the current working directory. And we'll join that with pages. And we'll read this directory. This is going to give us an array of all the files. And we'll replace their extensions with nothing. In fact, we'll do it differently. We'll split dot and take the first one. Okay. So we get each route, pages. Now we can say something like pages dot for each page. Well, turn it into an express route. So we keep all our code, really. Um, but instead of the star here, now we're in a position to do slash page. Um, Keep in mind, it has no extension, so this should be good. Okay, but what do we want to do in here? Well, we need to import the component. And if we import the component, we can't predict how we import it, because keep in mind, they're named exports. So let's take a look. So we have components like breed and breeds, but export const breeds, and then this one, export const breed, we can't predict. So to add predictability, we'll turn these into the default exports. So we'll come on the bottom and say export default breed. Now you kind of see why Next.js has default exports as well. Export default breeds. Okay. So now we know the default export is the component. This is great. So let's go here. And now we have something to go off. We can actually import stuff. So we'll say, we'll turn this into an async thing first. Say const um, mod for module is we import the page. Then we say const component is the default export. And then we just render the component instead of app. We can maybe get rid of these props. This looks good. Um, let's do that. Perfect. So now we should have slash breeds. Let's restart the dev server and try. Okay, it's not a problem. Both our issues are in app.tsx. And we changed the exports from named to default. So we're just going to have to do this. We'll rerun everything. Looks good. On port 3000 now, we can't get slash. That's good. But we can get breeds. Notice client-side React kind of takes over and, and the router panics because of this. Um, let's rebuild everything again. Okay, it works. We have good boys and everything's great, but we're not fetching data on the server still. And we can identify that by removing the client-side script. So we'll just actually remove that entirely. Now we're only on the server. Let's see what only the server's output is without React on the client. Yeah, that's nothing. So we moved stuff around. We have file system based routing. How do we add data fetching to the mix? Well, let's start by um, adding some initial properties. So we'll say um, initial breeds is an empty array. And we'll just instead of that, we'll do initial breeds here. Okay, that just gives us some potential. Great. And we'll do the same for breed. So we have image and breed. So we'll say um, initial, initial breed is an empty string. And initial image is an empty string. And we'll just use those here. So initial breed and initial image. Okay, so we've kind of prepared it a little bit. Now let's refactor the fetching utilities. So what that means is we'll take all of this and just factor it out. So we'll do it here. So we'll say const get stuff async function that returns a promise of object.keys, whatever. Okay, this looks good. And now instead of all of this, we'll just do get stuff dot then set breeds. Awesome. Looks good. Let's do the same on breed. So we have a big fetch. Take this, say const get stuff it's async, and we'll return this. But instead of all of this, we just return data dot message. So we'll say return data dot message. Perfect. And now we'll get stuff then set um, image. Great. But get stuff probably takes a breed here. So we'll do that as well. Get stuff breed. Okay, this looks really, really good. Um, we don't need the loading state probably. Great. Fantastic. So far, so good. Let's rebuild everything and see what happens. Ideally, nothing changes. We still don't fetch data, but 
everything's kind of fine. Um, in fact, if we bring back the client side JavaScript, we should be good here. So let's try. Perfect. Everything works. Good, as expected. Notice initial breed is empty. That's fine. Um, we could we could fix that, I think. Uh, but anyway, so far, so good. I think initial breed could just be um, from the window. So if we go to the anyway, we, we won't we won't concern ourselves with that for now. Good. Everything's working. Um, this is the root route, of course, which has nothing. So we'll go back to breeds. And finally, we will fetch data um, on the server side. So how we do that is we just like we export the component, we need to export a way to get data and pass it as props to the component, get server side props. Okay, so let's do that. So if we go to breeds, um, we can export const get server, or just call it GSSP, get server side props. It's an async function that returns props, it should return breeds as what though well exactly it's a wait and get stuff perfect this looks really good um something's wrong with vs code apparently uh, this is fine and then we'll go back to breed same thing we'll export const gssp it's a function that uh, returns props in this case we need breed and we need image so initial breed breed is well we need query params so we'll say query um, query.b and initial image is get stuff. This is perfect. This looks very, very good. Okay, save. We'll save both of those. Um, and we should be ready to rumble. So we'll come back here. So we're getting the component, but let's also get GSSP. So if component, if mod.gssp, then well, let's start with props here. And we'll say props is that. Um, this no, we, we pass the rec object dot. Actually, we could just pass the whole rec object. Why not? And this is good. And lastly, we um, spread props onto our component just like that. Okay. So it's just exporting away to fetch. We get the props and we pass it. So for breeds, it's initial breeds, I believe. Yeah, perfect. For breed, it's initial breed and initial image. Perfect. All right, let's kill the dev server. Start again. Actually, let's remove client side React one more time. Kill the dev server, start it, and perfect. Notice we're, we're fetching data fully on the server. In fact, well, let's fix that go back link. Um, link goes to breeds now. Okay, uh, let's like, kill this. Let's reload, go back. Perfect. So this is entirely server end. In fact, if I view the source now, we actually see all the dogs coming to us. Um, from the server side. That is full server rendering, okay, uh, including server data fetching. So that's one quick win for us. So what we just did was we implemented um, server side routing, we implemented server side rendering, and we implemented server side data fetching. These are some of the things that frameworks do for us. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about what frameworks will do for us. And to do that, I'd like to highlight that we're still using one legacy, probably not the best API. Can you think of what that is? It's render to string. So if we come back to the computer, um, what we'll see is we in the server here are using render to string. And render to string doesn't take advantage of all of React's concurrent features, um, like suspense, etc. There is render to pipable stream instead that takes care of this for us. And now we're not changing any user code at all. This is only so imagine this is Next.js, right? So we're changing library code and the users benefit for free. This is what frameworks are good for. So instead of res.send, what we can do is const pipe is render to pipable stream. Um, and then we'll pipe this to the response. And this is much better. It helps us take advantage of all of React's concurrent features. And if we've done it right, we really don't need anything more. In fact, let's add bootstrap scripts to include our client bundle here. So this is just client save. And now if we rebuild everything, okay. So we have still server streamed rendering. And so all we did was change an API and without any changes to user code, things just followed. What's the difference between render to string and render to Bible stream? Render to string is synchronous, meaning if you have a very deeply complex React tree, it will block. It will just say, wait, 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 I'm rendering. 
and it's not interruptible. It cannot um, do concurrent things, it cannot do parallel things. And as a result, if like multiple clients connect to your server, but your server is busy rendering for client A, then clients B, C, D, E, F are just gonna have to wait. Also in an extreme case, a render to string can probably just crash your server and uh, you know um, thrash the event loop and so on. It's not good because it's not an asynchronous API. Render to pipe stream does that. It renders to a Node.js stream that can then be either combined with other streams, which is the case for React server components and the knitting you see, um, or it can, um, like stream chunks of, to the browser as they become available while also being interruptible. So render to pipe stream is asynchronous. It doesn't block the event loop and it increases the time to first byte by cumulatively streaming data to the client. All of this for free just by um, of the, the framework changing code without any user code changes. This is a benefit that server server side frameworks give you. All right, let's wrap up by talking about React server components. That was a little bit about what frameworks will do, um, but we can't stop this without talking about server components um, because they are things also that frameworks will do. Server components change the paradigm, the core paradigm of React from being client first to being server first. Um, and because it's server first, you can't like client render a little app and then like at some point the app speaks to the server and so on. You have to start with the server. Server components doesn't mean everything is always serverful, but it includes the server into any chosen point of your React tree. It could include the server at a component level, etc. What we just did, and what a lot of frameworks do, is they server render at the page level, but to get more granular, to say, hey, I have this one thing, this one blog post I want to server render. You can't do that until now. Server components do have their caveats. Um, their caveats being they're not actually server components. They just run like Node.js side. So you can use them to statically build websites as well that don't need a server, for example. They require you to rethink your mental model of React quite a bit. And this is a practical tool that you can take with you. Keep in mind, we've, we've, I've given you a tool already for how to data fetch and when to data fetch. Uh, this is before you start rendering. Similarly, um, if you adopt, if you want to make yourself in the best position to adopt server components, what I can recommend is, um, is rethinking your interaction boundaries and really making them as small as possible. So if you have a big blog post component with mostly text and like one interactive button in there, um, you, you'd be best to move your button outside and, and separate your interactive components as much as possible. And it does require some rethinking this way, but the benefits of course are pretty big because if you make the, the right trade-offs, um, you can then include the server on any part of your tree. It's pretty powerful. Um, React server components require an entirely new generation of tooling. So things like bundlers, you need a bundler that can understand where to split the bundle, where to create a server bundle and a client bundle with a directive use client, for example. You need a separate router to understand how to stitch or knit uh, client and server side things together. You, there's all these new tools that you need and you need a router, by the way, client and server side that don't yet exist, but they will come. This is also why I'm convinced React Server Components is still experimental because a lot of that work is still being done. Hydration is another thing that's a little bit tricky, at least at this point in time, because you need the entire tree to then hydrate the interactive parts. You can't just only hydrate interactive parts in an otherwise fully server rendered app. Um, so there's work being done, I think, around selective hydration there, but it's still one of those things that is a little bit nebulous for now, um, at least at the time of recording. Um, just some more caveats for you to be aware of. Directives are a thing. So you know how we have use strict in JavaScript, which is just a string at the top. React introduces use client and use server for mutations that um, are just a break in pattern. They're not standard JavaScript, but they're React framework or React conventions. And I think it's important to make yourself aware of the difference. Fetch is in at least the Next.js patched. So you need to be aware of this for your own understanding. Browser-based fetch, the global fetch, is not the same as fetch in Next.js is different. They override the global variable to give you more convenience, but it's just important that you know that so you learn JavaScript and not Next.js or vice versa. Um, finally, the final tool, the third tool I'll give you is context. Context doesn't exist on the server side. It's a little bit hard because usually with client side apps, the client is bespoke to the client. Client context is bespoke to the client. On server, one server services multiple clients, so you can't really share context like that. Um, as, as a tip to you, using server-side caching as context is a great idea. So you could have a server-side cache with a key whose key in, in, includes some type of unique identifier for your user and each user gets their own cache 
And this is also great for things like garbage collection, or you could um, persist stale cache to a database or something like this. All right, with that, let's wrap up by looking to the future. Um, the future is bright, especially in terms of framework. But to throw back to the beginning, I'd like to circle back to the question, does everybody need to use a framework? Does everybody need? The answer is, I think it depends. If you're making only internal proofs of concept, if you're making only internal developer tools to be used by intranet VPN only employees, I don't know that it does. Of course, there is the risk of creating your own framework accidentally and not leaning on best practices, but maybe that's enough for your use case. I think the vast majority of people would benefit from uh, using a framework for these reasons. Of course, all of these things are handled and you can just move fast, but again, it's gonna vary. All right, let's wrap up. In summary, we covered a tremendous amount of content in this video. We covered um, what frameworks are and the difference between library, framework, meta framework. We covered what frameworks actually do, or at least some of the, the top three things that they do. We implemented them from scratch. Um, and we looked a little bit to the future. We looked at React server components, some of their caveats and so on. Um, I hope this has been useful to you. Um, and I'd love to uh, invite your comments, feedback, etc. If you're learning from and or enjoying this channel, I would invite you to subscribe to the channel. It's a great way to support me, uh, just, you know, uh, to continue making more of these and supporting you, really. Um, I'd really appreciate a like, subscribe, and even sharing it on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. That would really help. Um, also, if there's stuff you, you're interested in and you want to know more about, please leave a comment and ask me, and I'd be happy to make that content for you. Until next time, it's been a pleasure as always. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.